people. A huge, huge warm welcome to you all, to you all, to what is unfortunately the last workshop. But guess what? It is the most fire that I've got for you today. It is real life, practical stuff. Can we get some fire emojis in the building? Can we get some heat? Can we get some brain emojis? Because your brains are going to be firing and wiring neurons like they haven't before for any other workshop, I believe. Personally, um, thanks to our good friend, uh, Max. And before we begin, a reminder, as we do always, learn fast. What does that mean? Forget what you thought you knew about uh, AI or no code. Of course, some of you have played with it. I've, I've spoken to you <laughs> through the chats. Um, active, be very active and engaged. Ask any questions that pop up in your mind in the moment. There is no silly question. Remember that. Uh, also, be taking notes as well. If you've got an, uh, you know, the Apple uh, iNotes or if, if it's kind of your Google Docs, whatever it is, there's also a note taking functionality on, on Butter as well. Feel free to do so. Pop them into the chat. Why not share your notes with your fellow uh, one presenters, right? And then S is your state. Remember to be, you know, hydrated. Make sure that you've got a bit good, good bit of sunlight, vit, vit D in your system. And like we said, keep straight, okay? Back straight, m making sure your posture is exuding power and confidence so that you can you can absorb this knowledge much, much faster and much more, uh, much quicker as well. Uh, and lastly, teach. T stands for teach, right? We're going to be learning this information also with the added intention to teach our friends and family using the Feynman technique. You don't understand something uh, unless you're able to teach it, okay, Eff efficiently. So before I hand over to our workshop, workshop extraordinaire, our teacher uh, for today, Mr. Max Haining. Uh, he is, let me do a quick, quick intro and I'd love, to, love for you to tell us a bit more. Uh, Max is the founder of 100 Days of No Code, an educational platform on a mission to democratize software creation by helping people build websites and apps without a single line of code. How cool is that, guys? Give me a fire emoji. If you're, if you're willing to build prototype so quickly, uh, without any coding, without any Python, without any C sharp, without any of that jargon, <laughs> going straight in, dragging and dropping your way to success. So, since launch, um, Max has been able to empower more than 6,000, I'm sure that's gone way up, uh, people to bring their ideas to life uh, using no code as well. So, if, you, if you're on this mission as well if you're on this social entrepreneur mission as we've got a community builder extraordinaire over here that can touch on so many things i want to pick his brain on so many things but today we're going to be talking just about uh ai and no code i want you to give a warm warm welcome a one percent welcome to the, the man the myth the legend that is max Haley. over to you my man <laughs> I have to say, um, that is probably the best intro I've ever had. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> well deserving, honestly. You're incredibly humble uh, every time I speak to you, and I can't can't wait to see what the future holds. Uh, and I'm really excited for, for everything that you do. I'm a huge supporter, and you know we, we're huge supporters. So I appreciate no, it. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Um, and it's it's really really exciting to be here. Um, Heard so many good things about the one percent school. I hear you guys are absolutely crushing it um, uh, over the last few weeks, um, and it sounds like today is kind of the culmination of all your work and your um, the energy and ideas and kind of learning that you've been doing over these last few weeks. So um, yeah, you must be feeling tired with the weight of the learning that you've been you've been uh, sort of taking in. But hopefully, this last session will energize you and kind of bring you and take you over the line. Um, so uh, let me share my slides, or yeah, my slides, and then we can we can dive right in. Um, super excited for this session, and thank you so much for coming to, to join us today. Alrighty. Okay, so just gonna get this guy up and running. We could see some thumbs up if we can see this. Um, I think we can. Um, amazing. Okay, perfect. Um, alrighty. So um, this workshop today um, is an intro to no code. It's a 360 
towards getting you uh, an understanding of how you can build apps, websites, software without writing um, a single line of code, which to me sounds pretty exciting. Um, and hopefully it does to you guys as well. So I really love this quote. And this was actually from the CEO of GitHub, uh, the largest um, coding repository in the world in 2017. And he said, the future of coding <laughs> is no coding at all. Um, and we're slowly moving towards this point. Um, and the democratization, um, the ease of which we can now build um, is getting to a point where it's it's faster, more powerful, um, and more flexible than ever before. So I guess I just wanted to, to kick this off by getting a little bit of a, a check on who is technical here, who knows how to code in this room. Um, so maybe um, if you can uh, leave uh, a comment in the chat. Um, OK, so Burhan. Very basically, okay, interesting. What about um, everyone else in the room? What is your level? It doesn't matter. For me, just just a caveat, I have no clue how to code. Um, so um, yeah, it'd be interesting to hear where you're coming from, guys. Okay, so um, we've got a did a bit of coding when I was 11 and 12, interesting. Um, in, yeah. So when I did try this, this is the same experience. I forgot it all. Um, it didn't stick. Uh, anyone else? Um, uh, anyone else want to share kind of their level that they're coming at this, um, this kind of technical stuff with? Zilch. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, yeah, same. Okay, awesome. Um, now, I kind of asked that question um, because um, today, hopefully, regardless of whether you can code or whether um, you can't, today's session is all about giving you the confidence and giving you that pathway towards being able to build your own ideas, regardless of your technical ability, regardless whether you've done coding or not. Um, so hopefully, by the end of this session, you feel like you have a pathway, a roadmap towards your ideas that doesn't involve or doesn't um, regard the technical ability that you have. So what are we actually gonna cover today? So we're gonna do a quick like, okay, so what is no code? Um, what does no code look like with a little bit of AI sprinkled on top? Um, then we're actually gonna show you what this looks like. I'm gonna show you, then you're gonna, you know, take over the mic and actually try it yourself. Um, so you can really start to taste the power of this stuff, this technology. Um, and then I'll just give you a bit of a spiel about, okay, so why should you actually care about this stuff? Some case studies to make sure um, that, you know, you guys know that this is actually a legit thing. This is happening. This is being used in the real world um, and not something that I've just kind of created uh, and put on a slide deck. And then a Q and A at the end. Q and A is left for like deeper questions, but I really, really want you guys to just be chucking questions at me in the chat as I go, um, because I don't really like uh, hearing the sound of my own voice for too long. So it would be great to hear yours um, too as I go through this. Okay, so um, in case you're wondering, who am I? Um, now I think Mohammed uh, kind of. Um, covered most of uh, the Who Am I in his wonderful introduction. Um, uh, but I'll give you a quick uh, overview as well. So I'm Max. Um, I'm the founder of 100 Days of No Code. I'm the founder of 100 Days of AI. And I'm really on this path towards translating um, tech into very accessible means for people to use it, um, whether that's no code, whether that's AI, and helping people bring their ideas to life. So these were um, these are all the things that I've kind of been able to do since um, learning to no code uh, in 2020. Um, but before kind of this point, I was very much the ultimate non techie ideas guy. Um, so just to kind of push this point a little bit harder, I don't know if you guys are still using Microsoft Word at school, 
but even that I found a little bit tricky. Um, uh, I was that non-techy. I had countless notebooks full of ideas, um, but they never saw the light of day. Apart from one in 2017, it was an Airbnb for storage startup. We won some awards, we raised some money, all without a product. Um, and our team was fully non-techy. Um, so we were completely reliant on developers who could code to build our idea. Months and months have passed um, with little to show for it. Um, we were really dependent on developers. And what made this worse is that once we did have a somewhat functioning product, the time lag between our user needs and our development speed made it impossible for us to iterate fast enough um, and create a product that was useful for the people that were using it. And sure enough, it failed. Um, uh, but what stuck with me from this experience was the need to become a little bit more technical. That seed had been planted in my mind. Um, and the obvious thing to do at the time was, okay, well, I'm going to learn how to code. That's the only way to become technical, right? So I joined a few coding boot camps. I didn't actually start any of them um, uh, because before I even did, I found out about the world of no code, which you guys are going to be learning about today. So I dug a bit deeper, went down the rabbit hole. What is this no code thing? Uh, and announced to my 50 follower Twitter audience at the time that I'd be learning to no code for 30 minutes a day for 100 days during COVID, during lockdown, when we all had a bit of spare time in our hands. That's when 100 days of no code was born and the start of my trans transformation from ideas guy to builder began. So what does no code actually mean? Um, so no code on its own could really mean uh, a lot of things, could mean anything. Um, you know, I can write in my, no my notebook without code. I can play tennis without code. I can go for a walk without code. Um, but this is why I love this tweet from Lacey Kessler, who rightly calls out the distinction between saying I make things without code versus I make things without writing any code. And the key word there being writing. You'll see why in a minute. So what we really mean by no code is this set of tools that give us the power of code without having to write it. That's where the, the writing, the key word there comes into play. Instead, we can create websites, apps, chatbots, databases, automations, visually giving rise to this kind of new way of building products. So what you're looking at here is Bubble, which is a no-code tool. And this is the editor where people are users, no-coders like me, and uh, very soon you will be dragging and dropping components onto a screen to visually build your idea. And this is much like uh, building with Lego. Um, so you can build things visually online with these tools um, as you would build something from your imagination with Lego blocks. So these tools all come with these kind of pre-built components that you drag and drop onto your screen, which are the equivalent to Lego blocks. Um, and they may be things like text buttons, maps, login flows, input fields, elements of a screen or a page that you interact with every day on the apps that you use. So for example, when you're, um, when you're using Twitter, you're gonna uh, see that there's a button to like uh, write a tweet um, or post your tweet. You can see that there's different uh, elements uh, in that kind of user experience where you can message someone or click different uh, aspects of the app. These are all elements and things that you can build within no code um, and can combine to kind of uh, create the idea that you have. And this analogy sort of works on a micro and a macro level. What do I mean by that? So on a micro level, you can connect these pre-built components together inside one tool. And on a macro level, on a big scale, you can actually connect different no-code tools together uh, to be greater than the sum of their parts. So if we see an example, so 
This tool I mentioned here, that's Bubble. You could then connect it to another no-code tool um, to kind of increase the power and functionality of what you're building. Okay, and last analogy here to just kind of bring it home a little bit more. But um, probably you guys are familiar with IKEA in some way, shape, or form. So whenever we buy something from IKEA, whether it's a desk, a wardrobe, wardrobe or bathroom fitting, um, we still have to assemble the pieces to that thing together, which is just like entering kind of a no-code tool. Uh, and you can see all the pre-built components. Uh, if we just go back a few sides on this left-hand side, all the pre-built components um, that the, you're then essentially bringing together um, uh, to build what you need to build. And of course, although you're not going to have as much power or customization as you would if you were starting from scratch, um, writing with code, just like IKEA, you're not going to find a more accessible, cost-effective, and faster way than building with no code. <clears throat> so that is uh, just scratching the surface. And you'll be pleased to know that this isn't um, well, this is the tip of the iceberg in terms of what you can do with no code. Because thanks to AI, no code has just received an upgrade. Now, what do we mean by that? Um, essentially, in a super um, high level way, no code isn't just visual anymore, it's conversational and it's code generating. And what does that actually mean? It means that you can build in faster, more quicker, and more powerful ways, um, all, again, without writing a single line of code. So this is where no code and AI come together um, in these kind of free, harmonious uh, kind of relation relationship experience. I'm just going to pause there, um, just in case anyone has any questions. As I'm moving through this, um, I want to give as much space for you guys to talk as much as I am. Um, so please just shout if anything comes top of mind for you guys. Feel free to put it into the chat or if you'd like to uh, unmute, feel free to ask via the mic and hand it over to you. So over to you at this point, if there's any questions, let's just see the chat quickly. Yeah, somebody's oh. typing. So, oh, nice. That's it. That looks, that looks like scratch. When building with blocks, you are essentially doing most of the process of writing code. Ooh. Exactly. You're still you're still doing. You're st you you need to think like a programmer. Still, you still need to think like a coder. But you're just ex executing in a different way. So instead of typing on your keyboard, you're literally dragging and dropping your mouse. Um, to the same outcomes. So um, it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's a different way of doing it. And I guess the point, the point of doing it is because it's leverage. And what I mean by leverage is that it's way faster um, and way more flexible. So for example, if you have an idea that you want to build, you could do that by writing some code. And that is totally to totally a feasible way of doing it. The problem is, by the time someone has written the code for that project, the no coder will have shipped it already, shared it, and hopefully validated it in the process. So really, it's about time, it's about speed, it's about leverage, and it's about gaining maximum amount of insights as quickly as possible. And you can only do that if you can build fast. And that's where no code comes in. I don't know if you have any other thoughts on that, Mohammed, like in terms of yeah, your experience of no code, but um yeah, it would be cool to hear. Yeah, no, every every time, as in if if you ever want to wanna build a prototype, as in if you were to go on on, on freelance websites like Fiverr or Upwork or People Per Hour, you'll see that that the best ratings are for, for no code developers, um, in terms of how quickly they've turned things around and um, yeah, it's, it's 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 just the idea of speed, guys. Like how how quickly you can you can then test and then you limit your your losses almost. You you, you in this idea of failing fast. I think you know no code just goes so well <laughs> with that. Rather than 
you know, the idea of sitting down for ages, building an infrastructure, but, you know, you know, building something um, line, line by line. And then later on, you realize, oh, no, this wasn't the right thing to test. So, yeah, very experiential. Like, yeah, it, all about experiments, all about very lean, isn't it? Isn't it, Max? Very lean startup. -y. So I love it. Exactly. Um, yeah, lean, lean is the way. Um, but, you know, this isn't this isn't to discount um, coding as a pathway. It's just a different route to get to the same outcomes. Um, and uh, it really comes down to personal preference, but uh, obviously I'm biased in this case. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, it's um, it's an interesting one. Cool, should we, uh, should, we, should we jump to the next, yeah, the next part of the, of the slides? All right. Let's check it out. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> Let's just quickly, very quickly dig into what we actually mean by these three things. So we've got visual, conversational, and code generating. So no code, as we know, is this visual layer of building. As we've just found out, it's all about dragging and dropping on the page. So you can connect different blocks and components together. Great, so this is the visual layer. We already know this, we've already been through this. <clears throat> What's this conversa conversational layer? What do I mean by conversation? Well, have you guys used ChatGPT? Because if you have, then you would have, um, okay, great, we're getting some thumbs up. You would have asked something to ChatGPT to get a response. So you would have literally had a conversation with ChatGPT to get a response. This is where <clears throat> conversational comes into play. And what we mean by that is a co-pilot as you're building. So you're essentially asking your no-code tool that you're in to do certain things. So it may be, can you create a page for me? Can you create a, a login flow for me? Can you create a database for me? Um, and it will, just like ChatGPT, respond to you, whether with the steps or actually executing on your request. So let's just have a little look at this, um, this video just so you can get a grasp of what we mean by this conversational layer that AI has brought to no code. Um, now, would you be able to give me a, a sound check on this, uh, Mohammed, when I'm just, uh, oh, when perfect. I start playing this? Awesome. Oh, thought, yeah. awesome. All good. fire emojis in the building that was that's incredible building an entire <laughs> app with just 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 a few lines that's, <laughs> no no code just, just literally conversation chatting to the ai that's incredible <laughs> wow. yeah that's yeah. it is wild isn't it like conversational building is where we're heading <laughs> um so um yeah it's a really exciting kind of addition to no code um so hopefully that guy's got you guys um thinking your creative juice is flowing um in terms of how one can now start building apps you've got the visual layer you've got the conversational layer where you're asking um these tools to do certain things whether that's coding or or um or creating databases or the theme for your app or whatever that may be and then we've kind of got this third layer oops um the third layer which is code generating and i'm not sure why there's a two in front of that but here we are um and this is kind of the third layer of what we're talking about here so visual we already know that conversational we've just talked about that and now 
code generating. So this is where it gets really, really interesting um, because not only can you get AI to help you with all the stuff that we've just seen from that video, but you can even ask it to write code for you. So if there's a certain part of your no-code app that you're building that is so far beyond that capability of the tool that you're using, then you can inject extra customization into the experience that you're building by injecting code into it. And this is where you can turn your natural language, your prompt, and receive code, which you can then push back into the tool that you're building. So this is something that you don't need to worry about too much, but it's when you're getting to an advanced point and you're like, oh my gosh, I want to add an extra bit of source to this app, then we add some extra code. And then you've kind of got the, the perfect blend of three things. You've got the visual, you've got the conversation, and then you've got the customization afforded to you that code has. So let's have a little look at this in action um, uh, to actually really bring this home. Um, you saw a little teaser of it in, in the Flutterflow tool, the video that I just showed you. But let's actually see it in a live demo. Um, so let's go. Um, now, it would be good, um, Mohammed, if you could just check my, um, when I move. <laughs> nice, I lo I'm loving those, the soundboard. Um, if you could just check when my, uh, ta yeah, if my tab moves with the, the screen, if that's all right. Um, oh, okay. OK, so it's, uh, all right, I'll change, yeah. I'll stop sharing for two secs. Question from Isaac. But with this, you still have to link the parts of code by writing more code. Is that, is that a question? Yeah. Um, see, I don't, I'll put my hands up and that, that kind of code layer. Um, yeah, I don't know the nuances of how, how it works um, in terms of linking. The code that you've already written. Um, the only thing that I do know is that all those pre-built components that you're still using with no-code tools, they're all just code hidden under this visual layer. So the visual layer is what you see. The code is still there, but it's already been written for you. <laughs> so all those all those boxes that you're dragging into the page. Um, that is, uh, yeah, um, visual, but also code. So I'm talking about the fact you have to link the AI generated code to the blocks with code, got you. So yeah, that makes a ton of sense. So a lot of the no code tools have custom code blocks. So just as we're saying, we've got, they've got all those other blocks. They also have custom code blocks. And that is where you can literally inject external code into your no code tool. As to how it interacts with the other elements, I don't know the nuances of that, but um, that's kind of how it works at a high level. Cool. Let's um, uh, let's get into it and just show you a little little example here. Brilliant, brilliant questions, by the way. It's like amazing stuff. So yeah, thank you. Going. Keep it coming. Yeah, um, it's all good stuff. All righty. Okay, so. Now you should see Freeman. Now, Mohammed, you you're a big big fan of Freeman, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, but, but built some sites from there, including yeah some of the one percent initial walkups, and uh, yeah, was 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 nice. really impressed by what I was getting back. But there's always that thing about no code versus AI, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, um, for sure. So um, cool. <clears throat> So, so this is um, Afia. So this is free, um, and this is a landing page tool that you can use um, to build websites, uh, marketing sites, landing pages, all all those kind of things. Now, they will charge. And most of these tools will charge for um, for uh, you to kind of connect a custom domain but you can still publish your sites even if you don't want a custom domain. So now I'm just gonna quickly show you how to use this no-code tool that has AI as part of it to build a very simple landing page. Um, so 
I'm going to input a prompt. So this is the conversational layer that we've just been talking about. I'm going to input a prompt, and then it will give me back an output um, and actually build part of this website for me. So let's give it a go. <clears throat> so let's say I um, surf. Um, landing page um, with a blog. Let's give it a go. Okay. So I'll just log in. Bingo. <laughs> and see here. So this is this is the wild part of this, right? Is that you can literally go and grab a coffee. You can go and grab a drink and then watch your site build in front of you um, without doing anything. Now, of course, this is only the first step, but it's wild that this is happening from one single prompt. Smooth. Um, so you can see it's taken my prompt and it's trying to craft a website with a blog um, based on the prompt that I've given it. So as you can see, it's it's developing the different pages um, that we've got here. And it's developing the pages in different sizes. So you've got your desktop optimized, you've got your tablet optimized, and for mobile as well, which is incredible. So now this is like a really, really great first step on that building journey and probably takes out a lot of that upfront investment so you can start working on the content for your site uh, rather than spending as much time building. And you can still see it's working away and it's like your little, your little bot that is just kind of building away in the background. You let it be for a little bit and then you can dive in once you're ready to customize and use the the various um, kind of uh, components that you'll find on this left-hand side to kind of customize it to your liking. And Max, just a random thing, but I'll notice that Framer is really good with the copy. <laughs> so like the copy that it's generating is really optimized um, SEO-wise mm -hmm. and like it, it did a much better job than I did when I was trying to explain <laughs> something. Uh, and it just, yeah, like, I'm just yeah, so yeah. impressed, by, by, particularly by the copy and the blogs that, that Framer chucks out, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, and, and content, especially like the, the blank page problem, content is really uh, hard to do sometimes um, when you're not quite sure how to present a certain or position a certain thing on a landing page. So it's, it really gets over that kind of blank page writer's block uh, problem. Um, so anyway, so now Framer has given you your first version of your website. And then what you can do is you can get, kind of go in and actually customize the look and the feel of everything um, based on your preferences. But as I said, it's got you a little way of the way there now um, so that you don't have to do as much upfront building. And what's interesting is if you don't like this, if you're like, ah, actually this isn't, um, this isn't really aligned to my vision, then you can let, you can ask it to regenerate based on a new prompt. So you can write a new conversation starter in there. So I may have added instead a surf club um, that um, showcases members um, and has an about section, et cetera, et cetera. And that would have given uh, Framer, the tool that we're using here, a new input to create a new output for you guys. Um, and you can even see here, you can start just clicking here to kind of customize the different themes that AI has created for you. Um, so that is kind of the, the very quick demonstration of Framer. Um, now I'd love for you guys to actually try it out yourselves. Um, so let me reshare my screen and let's get into it. Well, free to check out. Is it frame or AI, Max? Isn't it frame or AI? Yeah, I think so. Actually, I think you can access it from framer.com. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll pop the link in the chat as well. Um, but yeah, so 
we've seen it in action now it's your turn um and the steps are here so if you literally just open up framer.com you'll see that landing page that i um went to initially um and then you can write your prompt in um to describe the landing page you want to build um hit start um and then watch the site build in front of your eyes um <clears throat> so does anyone have any questions before starting this i've given about seven minutes and i think it's great if you guys do this aligned to the idea that you're thinking about building um but yeah maybe you have some more thoughts on that mohammed yeah brilliant so for example afia your, your beads um fashion beads company you've you've done a brilliant job with the pitch deck but then maybe bringing that life with a website that'd be really really good same with the digital marketing stuff or whatever it is that you have as an idea just feel free to, to give it and any any um advice on the prompts uh obviously prompt engineering is is as, as we've spoken about is one of the key skills for us in this mm. in this coming up phase of, of the next few years but um, but yeah, and any is it more specific the better, or can should we go like medium in terms of specific specificity when it comes to <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's a great question. So I almost I've kind of what I've done is almost I feel like you guys. So what I found really useful is you can see um, the 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 result of a bad prompt, and you can see the result of a good prompt. So. Um, I think it's almost best for you guys to just put in whatever comes to mind so you can see what what it gives you and then uh, once you've kind of got those results back you can um you can give it better prompts and what what do better prompts look like well as mohammed says it's better to be more specific um it's better to give the tool a role so what is this tool um that you're using um what's its role here so for example you could you could say you are a world-class landing page builder that tunes it up to to know and to think that it's it's a world-class landing page builder um so small things like that can really help and then being more specific about what you actually want it to build can really help um but almost first start just going for it see what bad results you get and then from there you can almost know what not to do and then improve from there i love it i love it yeah do um, do it execute yeah. just just go ahead and have a crack yeah i'll uh, should i put these lo-fi beats on in the background oh, thought, yeah cool times awesome let's get them <laughs> that was your chance go ahead have a crack at building let me know in the chat if there's any questions. Hark, well done, man. That looks beautiful. That's your, your IMJ. Um, brilliant. Once you've built something, maybe tweak it a little bit if you'd like. Tweak the copy, add a picture, add a picture of your services, whatever you have. Maybe from your pitch deck, you can add some pictures into your actual website. For those of 
review coming in. Just yeah, framer.ai, framer.com. Check it out. Framer.com. We're just uh, giving a prompt, giving a couple of lines to the website, playing with it, seeing what it comes up with. And if we're not happy, guys, go back in, give it another prompt. This time with the added stuff that you like. As an example, when I did it first time, there wasn't there wasn't a place for testimonials. So next time I did a prompt, I said, can you add a bit of a testimonial page as well at the bottom? And an FAQ, frequently asked questions. And what's interesting is the FAQ was really aligned to my idea and I didn't really have to tweak it much. So it was brilliant. It gave me really good ideas. So yeah, keep them going. A few more minutes. with the color on the side so yeah the color palettes make it look but oh if if, if, you, if that's the look you're going for of course <laughs> the, the gold and the black then that's fine it looks nice as well it's nice and very uh, stylistic brilliant how are we doing guys do we um do we want a couple more minutes are we are we happy to kind of wrap up and then you We'll have infinite time to play and dive in post workshop. Um, how do you want to? Yeah, how do you want to do it? Yeah, I think guys, give us a thumbs up if you're ready to wrap up. You're all right. Okay, brilliant. We've got a thumbs up. I think everyone's happy. Is yeah, it? brilliant. Oh, well done, guys. Huge well, well done. Let me just give you. Well done, well done. <laughs> um, well done. So, so. That was a, a tiny, you're, you're, you're scratching the surface there. Like that is just what you've done there in five minutes. Imagine what you can do in an hour, in a day, in a week, <laughs> um, building with that stuff. So of course that will get you, you know, over that first initial bump, but there is that level of customization you can add um, as we were saying. So definitely spend time to perfect your prompts, but also to um, learn how the tool works so you can customize it in that kind of precision-like way to align to the vision that you have. Um, so uh, I hope you enjoyed kind of that little taste of what no code and AI looks like together.
So it's about time that we're able to do this. Um, because, you know, only 0.3% of the world's population can code, um, which is a bit crazy. Um, so that's a, like saying only one in 400 people can write. No code and AI empowers the 99.7% of us. So just like Shopify kind of enabled this drop shipping economy, YouTube and TikTok enabled the creator economy, no code and AI is enabling this builder economy. And what do we mean by that? Essentially, anyone now can be a builder um, uh, as we have seen today. And by kind of multiplying the amount of builders we have in the world, we're giving rise to these three things, which is super important. One, a more, vi more diverse range of problem solvers. Two, more inclusive digital spaces. And three, more accessible careers into tech. So knowing how to code will no longer be the threshold. No code will be. And just to kind of pick up on that point I mentioned earlier um, around validating your ideas, um, as builders, as entrepreneurs, as creators, we can now execute and validate our ideas on our own terms without dependency, um, just like I had in the story that I shared at the beginning of this talk. What this means is that build, building becomes faster, um, leading to a quicker time to market for whatever idea that you have, allowing you to generate insights from users, iterate and validate on all the assumptions that you have going into that idea. Time that would otherwise be spent building if you were doing it the old way, the code way. And now we're kind of approaching this point um, where um, you can build most if not all things so um people have made everything from facebook airbnb uber netflix only using no code tools to showcase that anything is really possible regardless of whether you can code or not so i kind of just wanted to close this out with three examples of case studies of people actually building with no code and having an impact in the real world because you may think this sounds great, but you may also be wondering, but who's actually used this in the real world? Surely everyone's just coding still, um, but they're not. And no code is growing and it's a movement that more and more people are picking up as they start to build their ideas. The first example is missing black people. Um, Dominic Norton, who's part of the 100 Days of No Code community, he built a directory to amplify the search for missing black people. It took him one hour to build. Uh, he did that in the morning. In the afternoon, he shared a tweet about what he's built. He then went viral on Twitter. And a month later, he had 20K petitions signed to put pressure on the government to um, <clears throat> amplify the search for missing black people. Now we've got a fun example. Um, and this is Bad Unicorn. So this is a product studio, which basically means um, it's a company that builds lots of companies. Um, and in their case, they build a bad business idea every two weeks. So they take a very funny, unusual, quirky idea and then build it every two weeks. And you may be wondering, how can they build that fast? Well, they've got no code, of course, and AI only adds fuel to that power. So they've been featured in Forbes, Bloomberg, TechCrunch. They've monetized a lot of the apps that they've created um, and they've had a lot of fun in the process. So again, another use case, case study for no code. And then last but not least, if you're looking to build a big kind of venture backed um, business, then Otter is a perfect example. So they use no code to validate their idea. And off the back of validation, they then raised 28 million from one of the biggest or some of the biggest venture funds or VCs um, in the world. 
So it really again shows that no code is a great starting point for people building their ideas. So, yeah, so we'll close out with two things. So obviously next steps, but then also some questions in the five minutes remaining. Um, so next steps wise, let me share in the chat um, an intro to no code and AI cheat sheet where you can take free lessons in there uh, to kind of go that step further from today's session if you really are excited about using these tools. Um, so I'll drop that in the chat in a minute. We've got our 100 days of no code challenge coming up on October the 1st and 100 days of AI challenge as well. And these are great ways to start learning these tools in just 30 minutes a day. So if you're interested, those are completely free and I'm sure Mohammed will share them with you as well and I can put them in the chat. Um, so yeah, should we open up for questions? Huge, huge thank you. Uh, to you, can you get some fire emojis in the building? Thank you so very much, Max. Really, really appreciate it. Also, um, you've set a bit of you know a bit of fire in my belly now, thinking about the uh, potential, you know, the, the in incredible potential that we have um, to, to, to utilize this, and also obviously that the free no code, um, uh, the hundred days no code challenge, but also uh, the, the boot camp as well, which is uh, mm -hmm. very, very, you know, it's, it's basically everything that that you'd learn in in the hundred days, but also uh, around a community, getting us, you know, pushing us to action. Uh, which is brilliant so please do guys blue check that out i think um max has also generously mentioned that one of you guys might be able to get yourselves a free spot is that or, or perhaps um yeah, you know, dep sure. depending on how things go uh to, to, to this evening uh <laughs> later on at six o'clock so so that's really really kind and generous uh of max as well so um yeah, I think, look, there's so much that I want you to, 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 to do after this. Is that the learning only begins after this uh, workshop as well. So any questions, feel free to unmute yourselves or pop them into the chat. Um, we're all ears. Uh, this looks good, but don't... Okay, so it's hard. I think, the coder extraordinaire. Uh, okay, this looks good, but don't you think if you want direct changes to the algorithm, you need code? Very good question. Yeah, um, exactly. And there be there be things that in that that um, no code. There be edge cases where no code isn't the best option for you. You may have a level of complexity where or or customization or thing like you mentioned, changing the algorithm that requires you to be knowledgeable knowledgeable about coding. Um, there's a reason why. Um, software developers, coders are one of the highest paid jobs um, because there's a real need for them. Um, and all the no-code tools that we're using are built by coders. So um, uh, yeah, I would I would say um, there's definitely edge cases that 90% um, of the time no-code is almost the default and then there'd be 10, 15% of the time where you may need that code injection. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Okay, so for from Burhan, thank you so much, Max, as well. Uh, this is the, honestly, I'm, I'm I'm so I'm so excited <laughs> for 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 everything that you're doing, Max. Just so, such a hype. This is, and it's just so practical. As in the the literal instantiation of our ideas is so easy now, easier than it's ever been before, and that really excites me as um as an educator in this space. So, uh, Burhan's question is: I've been using no code, as in Chat GPT and flutter this entire week to build my mvp but the last issue is in my code i've run into uh which has taken me two days and counting to resolve ah interesting yeah that 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 is that is an issue that 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 occurs isn't it um when we're when we're playing with yeah a bit of, I've, I've heard this happen as well with, with people using chat gpt but but yeah your thoughts um, right. yeah it um i think that there's there's one just broader point to make here is that no code is easier doesn't mean it's easy. Um, so um, there will <laughs> you will or should be prepared to uh, there will be head banging moments where you're like, oh my gosh, how do I do this? Um, and in your case, um, I've not used ChatGPT to kind of write code um, uh, before, but I've heard of similar 
issues. Um, in terms of troubleshooting, um, I think it's a case of trial and error. Um, I would also suggest looking at a tool called Replit. Um, let me share that in the chat. But um, yeah, uh, just stick, stick with it. And um, you may also find that you can simplify the idea. So you don't need to build a certain element of the app to at least get the V1 out there. Brilliant stuff, amazing stuff. Okay, uh, any more for any more? Thank you, you're welcome, Brohan, and thank you so very much, Max. Um, the in order for, for us to to to, to join um, the boot camp or to join the uh, the, 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 the no code and and then the AI challenges, um, Max, is is there a link? Should we just go to the to the website? Is it? Yeah, let uh, me um, let me pop that those in the chat. I've just shared um, the no code and AI cheat sheet, so you should have access to that um in the chat um and, and perhaps you want to save that um mohammed and you can share that you know after the session as well Brilliant. just to make sure everyone's got it um but here's the ai challenge um so feel free to uh it's completely free and then here's the no code one again completely free um david no code amazing brilliant and then there's the boot camp uh on the second yes. on, on the second uh website yes. which is here uh, we go I'll, it, I'll pop it in the chat yeah so amazing. all three there <laughs> oh, amazing brilliant stuff so yeah please do make, make sure to continue this journey this is not just a hypothetical uh little experiment in our minds that we we enjoy and, and get a bit of dopamine from but this is something that we, we during the process, intrinsically, we, we are dopamine junkies for the process itself, not the, yeah. not the little, yeah, so brilliant stuff. Huge thank you. Once again, Max, really, really appreciate your time. Really appreciate the energy.